Hi there and welcome back to Mommy Hates Cooking. Today is all about the Ninja Foodie. I'm going to show you my top 10 recipes that we eat regularly and make in the Ninja Foodie. All of these recipes are made using the Ninja Foodie Multi Cooker, which you can find a link for in the show notes as well. Let's get started reviewing all these delicious recipes. Hi there and welcome back to Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a Ninja Foodie Mississippi Pot Roast. Now this one is going to be one that your whole family really loves, trust me. Let's get started with cooking this pot roast. So for the pot roast, you're going to need the following ingredients. First, you're going to need olive oil, 3 pound beef chuck roast, half a cup of water and pepperoncini juice, 4 pepperoncini peppers, one ranch packet, one brown gravy packet, make that gluten free if needed, and a fourth a cup of unsalted butter. Now let's get on to a quick tip that I have for you. If you're using a Ninja Foodie, pour the olive oil in and then use a brush to brush it around the pot of the Ninja Foodie. That's a little bit easier than just pouring it in and having it gather on the sides. The next thing you'll do is sear the roast on each side for about two minutes using the saute function on high heat. Just about two to three minutes on each side to get it nice and browned and ready to cook. Now once you have that done, go ahead and add the water and the pepperoncini juice into the pot of the Ninja Foodie. This gives it the liquid it needs for the pressure cooker function. Now that that's done, you're gonna add your ranch seasoning packet followed by the brown gravy packet right on top of the roast. Now, if needed, remember to use gluten-free brown gravy packet if you are needing that for this particular recipe. Once that's done, go ahead and top it with the peppers, and then you're gonna go ahead and add the butter right in the middle. Now that that's complete, you have everything in the pot of the Ninja Foodie. You're gonna take the lid that comes separately with the Ninja Foodie, it's the pressure cooker lid, and secure that on top of the pot of the Ninja Foodie. Once you have it secured, go ahead and press the nozzle over to seal, and you're gonna cook this on manual pressure on high for one hour or 60 minutes. Once it completes cooking, you're going to go ahead and let it naturally release, which means you do nothing for 20 minutes. Once that's up, go ahead and move the nozzle over to vent, and then you will go ahead and open up the lid and have a great roast ready to serve. Now remember, you can add a little bit of cornstarch to that leftover liquid once you pull your roast out, and you can make a great gravy to top over the roast or over mashed potatoes if you prefer but this roast is gonna be delicious and it will be a favorite. Now remember too when making this that the peppers are not spicy, so it's just giving it flavor, not spice or heat. Now you can grab this full recipe over on mommyhatescooking.com. Join me again for another great recipe next time. Today I'm going to show you how to make these easy chicken fajitas in the Ninja Foodie or air fryer. They're very easy to make and even better to eat, so let's get started. This is actually one of our favorites for dinner. They are so easy, um, super quick. I love making these during the week and they are very good. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go over the ingredients. Now all of this information is going to be in the show notes below with the full recipe. So you can always check there to go back and look over things that I've said. It's all gonna be there. So the first thing we're gonna need are chicken thighs. Now I highly recommend that you buy chicken thighs, not chicken breast. The chicken breast does dry out, at least that's what we found with using it in the air fryer. Um, the chicken thighs really hold their uh, texture, their taste, all of it. They just taste so good in the air fryer. So that's our preferred chicken to use. Now you can always test out chicken breast, but you may wanna adjust the time just a bit. 
So once you have chicken thighs, we're gonna add different colors of bell peppers, onion, and then taco or fajita seasoning. So you can use your own seasoning, fajita or taco seasoning. I have some links to homemade versions in the post. And then also you can use just a store-bought taco seasoning. I use McCormick gluten-free taco seasoning quite a bit. So we typically will use that one unless I have a homemade one that I can whip up real quick. So once you have all that, we just build it into the air fryer. So we put it all in our air fryer basket. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we're gonna do is use our olive oil spray and coat the air fryer basket. So I have my Pompeian spray today, which is my favorite. It works the best. Um, it really has the same oil-like consistency as olive oil. So it goes on really well. Also, a spray bottle is a really good option, too, for olive oil. But you always want to have that on hand whenever you are working with the air fryer. It's a good oil to have handy. So first, we're going to put in all these chicken thighs. I have sliced these up into long slices for fajitas. So I am just putting them right on into this air fryer basket. So now that we have those in, we are going to add our peppers. So you're just gonna wanna add, now it might look like you have a lot here, which I have a few seeds left, we're not gonna worry about that, but they do shrink up in the air fryer as they cook, so don't worry about it if it looks like you have a lot. So I'm just gonna add these in around here. Just kinda evenly on top. We're gonna stir it up here in just a few minutes. So once you have that in, you're gonna add in your onions. And I just have these in long slices too, so we're just adding those in. Isn't that pretty? Even just looking at it, it's pretty because it's so full of color. Now that we have all of that added, we're just going to take this, here's my taco seasoning, and we're gonna just sprinkle it right evenly around. So I'm using about two tablespoons. Um, you can use the whole packet if you want. I've said before I'm not a big fan of spicy, so I try not to use quite so much or it's a little too spicy for my taste. Um, but once we have it all in here, we're gonna coat it again with another squirt of olive oil. And then we are going to go ahead and close the lid it's set here to 390 for 25 minutes on air crisp. So we're going to go ahead and start it and then about halfway through we're going to come in and stir it up so that we can make sure it's all cooking okay. Okay so it has now been going for about half the time so I'm going to go ahead and stir this up. So we are just going to really stir it up here kind of break apart the chicken if it's sticking or anything like that. Make sure it's really well coated with the um, taco seasoning. So it looks like it's cooking pretty good. So we're gonna keep it going for about eight more minutes. So I guess I cooked it a little more than half here because I have about eight minutes left. So we have it nice and stirred up. Now I usually will add a little splash of the olive oil spray again whenever I check on it. So I'm gonna do it. It's been 25 minutes and our fajitas are all done. Now don't those look good? So here's what they look like. You can kind of see those. I'm gonna plate them up here. So I put them on this big platter here with our tortillas. Now here's my little thoughts on tortillas. So I use white corn tortillas, and it's I just use Mission white corn tortillas. I heat them up in the skillet while these are cooking. I use a little bit of the olive oil spray and heat them up on both sides to, to toast the white corn tortillas. They are the best way to eat tortillas, in my opinion. Um, they taste so good with these fajitas. I think they're better than flour tortillas when they're heated up like that. Now, if they're just right out of the bag, I don't care for them that much. But when they're heated up, it just makes them taste so good. So anyways, and they're also gluten-free. So if you're going to 
eat these and you want to make them gluten-free, the gluten-free option actually tastes better than the flour option. So as you can see, I have them all plated here. I like to do my chicken fajita meat on one side and the tortillas on the other. So these are all warmed up. And then I'm just going to take some of this fajita meat and fill it right up into the tortilla. And then you have dinner. Now this is great served with rice, salsa, whatever you want to put with it. But that is how you make those chicken fajitas. Thanks so much for joining me today to learn how to make Ninja Foodie or Air Fryer chicken fajitas. As always, all of these show notes will include this recipe and anything else I mentioned today. And then you can always find all of these recipes on mommyhatescooking.com. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks so much. Hi there and welcome back to Mommy Hates Cookies. Today I'm going to show you how to make this Ninja Foodie Cheesy Broccoli Chicken and Rice all right in one pot in the Ninja Foodie. So let's get started. So the ingredients you will need are four boneless skinless chicken thighs, fourth a cup of white onion diced, one and a half cups of quick cooking rice uncooked, one and a half cups of water, two cups of broccoli or just a bag of frozen broccoli would work, one 10 ounce can of cream of chicken soup, one tablespoon of sour cream, one cup of shredded sharp cheddar and olive oil cooking spray. Spray the pot of the Ninja Foodie with olive oil cooking spray. Then add cubed chicken thighs and the onion to the pot and saute it. Once the chicken is fully cooked, you'll either want to use a pan for the Ninja Foodie or you can use the pot of the Ninja Foodie. You'll spray the pan or the pot with olive oil cooking spray and then we're gonna layer it with the ingredients. So the first thing you wanna add is the cooked chicken. Next, you'll add in the broccoli right on top of the chicken. It can be frozen. Um, I like to just add the tops of the broccoli, not the stems so you can trim it up a bit. Now you'll add the uncooked rice right on top of the broccoli and then pour the water right on top of the rice. Mix together the sour cream and the cream of chicken soup. Then spread this evenly over the entire dish. Now it's time to bake this. So you can use, if you're using the pan that goes with the Ninja Foodie, which would be a separately purchased pan, you'll put that on the rack, the wire rack, in the lowest setting. And then you're gonna bake that for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. Remember, you can also just use the pot of the Ninja Foodie too if you need to. So after 10 minutes, you're gonna open up the lid of the Ninja Foodie. Then you're gonna take a spoon and carefully stir up the ingredients in the dish. So you're gonna mix it around so that the rice is fully under the water. Once you do that, take one cup of sharp cheddar cheese and carefully and evenly place it on top of the dish. Be sure to be careful because it will be hot. Once you've done that, go ahead and bake it again for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. After baking, carefully open it up and it should be all nice and crispy on top. Now remember your chicken should have already been cooked. So this baking at the end is just to get that cheese nice and crisp. It's best to let it cool for about five minutes just to let it thicken up a bit. And then you can carefully remove it and serve it. I would suggest using the mitt though because remember it is going to be hot when you're pulling this out of the food. And once it's cooled, it's ready to serve and enjoy. 
Remember, you can always make this gluten-free too by using gluten-free cream of chicken soup, which is really easy to make yourself, or you can grab one at the store. Remember that you can find all of these recipes at mommyhatescooking.com. And be sure to subscribe and like this video so that you don't miss the next one. I'll be back again with another delicious recipe. Thanks so much for joining in today. Hi there, it's Christy Still with MommyHatesCooking.com. Today I'm back to show you one of the most popular Ninja Foodie recipes that is on my website right now. It's the one pot meatloaf with potatoes and corn. So you can do this all in the Ninja Foodie. It does have several steps, so unlike a lot of my recipes that are really little prep time, this one is going to take you a little bit more for prep. So count, count that into your cook time too, that you know that this is going to take a little bit longer than maybe a 30 minute meal. We like to do this one on the weekends whenever we're not really in a hurry. I'm not running from one activity to the next. So it's a great Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening family meal. Um, it's actually our kids' personal favorite. Um, this meatloaf was actually originally meatballs, a recipe that my aunt had sent me. And really, the secret is in the sauce. So I'm gonna show you what that sauce recipe is here in a little bit. But what I did is I took that recipe she sent me, and over the years I've recreated it into a meatloaf that we really like, using the sauce that goes on top of the meatballs that she had sent. And that really makes this recipe. And saying that though, if you have a personal favorite meatloaf recipe that's say in your family, you can always use the same method and use the meatloaf recipe that you prefer. So right now I'm going to start by showing you how to get this meatloaf prepared and then we're going to move on to some other steps. So right now I have, as you can see, the meat in here and then underneath it is the garlic salt and um, onion. So that's already in there. So that's the first step. Now we've got two pounds of ground beef in here. I'm going to go ahead and add to it two eggs that have been beaten. So you'll see those in here. Now we've got those set in there and then I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of old fashioned oats. <clears throat> in my case I use gluten free oats. Um, you can also use crackers or breadcrumbs but we prefer oats. And then I'm going to add in some evaporated milk. This is half a cup of evaporated milk. <coughs> Now that I've got all that in there, I'm going to combine it to form the meatloaf. Now I find it's best to use my hands. It just works easier to do. So of course after we get done, we're going to have to get our hands nice and cleaned. But to make this, I just combine it all with my hands until I get the meatloaf formed. Once the meatloaf is formed, we're going to put it on a sheet of foil that has been sprayed with some olive oil cooking spray to prepare to put into the Ninja Foodie. So the key here is whenever you're preparing this, make sure you get everything combined into one big loaf. So that's the first thing you need to do. So we are just going to keep getting this until all the oats, everything is mixed in. So you wanna get it really well mixed so that you know your oats aren't just covering the outside. You want them fully mixed into the meat. So it does take a little bit to get all of this mixed together. So now that I have the meatloaf all prepared in the bowl, I am going to go ahead and spray the foil with some olive oil cooking spray, just a little bit so that it doesn't stick. So now I've got my meatloaf and I am going to just place it on this foil. And I've already kind of formed the loaf while I was working it in the bowl. Now the thing here is you need it to be a little bit skinnier and long to fit in your foodie. So you're gonna have to work this to get it to fit right. And then we also are wanting to put corn in it next to it at the end. So the key is kind of how you shape this meatloaf. Now, worst comes to worst, say you made it too big and you can't fit your corn in the Ninja Foodie. Just use your microwave. Uh, most of the corn you get can easily be heated in the microwave. So it's not really that big a deal. You should be able to fit it in the foodie. But if you can't, just use the microwave and it'll be fine. So we have our meatloaf all prepared here. And now I'm going to wash my hands and get the foodie set up. And I'll show you how to get it all in there. 
Okay, so now that we have our meatloaf done, I've gone ahead and wrapped it in foil. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is put our potatoes in. So here's the potatoes. And I've measured out three pounds of potatoes. I like to use the gold potatoes. Um, you can also use the regular russet potatoes, but um, I would stick with gold or those because the red ones tend to burn out and these are gonna be in here for a little while. So I've got all these in the foodie. Now, I'm gonna put the basket, I'm gonna go ahead and, or sorry, the rack, I'm gonna put that in next. Now this you kinda have to work with to get these in with the potatoes in here. So you just kinda have to move around your potatoes until you can get them in here, which tends to be a little bit tricky, but eventually, like that, you'll get it. So now I've got that in here, and now I'm gonna pour one cup of water over this so that there's some water on here. That way you don't get a burn notice for your potatoes. So now that I've got that in here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the meatloaf right on top. So we're gonna put that right in here. We're gonna scoot it over and make sure it's nice and secured down and wrapped in foil, mainly to avoid having any um, meatloaf drip into the potatoes. And you may have to work with it a little bit to get it to fit right like I mentioned earlier. Don't worry too much about the corn right now because we're gonna do that last. So just make sure this fits for right now and just kind of get a little bit of room here on the side, which is where we're gonna put the corn in. So now we have got that all tucked in there. All right, so now it's time to put the lid on. We're gonna use the pressure cooker lid that comes with the Ninja Foodie. So this is the separate lid. So, you're gonna go ahead and secure the lid. Now you're gonna make sure it's on seal. So the nozzle of the lid needs to be on seal. Once it's on seal, we're going to have it pressure cook on high pressure for 25 minutes. Now remember, two, sorry. Remember too that it's going to take some time to build up the pressure, so you need to account for that as well. So even though it's 25 minutes, it's probably gonna take like 40 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and get that started. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna show you how to get the sauce ready to put on the um, meatloaf once it comes out. Okay, so now the Ninja Foodie is on and the meatloaf is cooking and the potatoes. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to do the sauce. The sauce is very simple and I'm gonna do it right here in the saucepan. So one day I called my mom and we have running jokes because she really, really hates to cook. She didn't really like cooking at all when we were kids. And now all of a sudden I've got her hooked on the Ninja Foodie so she's always calling me about recipes, which is really funny because that did not happen when we were kids. Um, so anyways, I called her one day and she said, hey, I just put that sauce in the microwave, which is very much my mom. She loves to use the microwave. But that's actually not a bad idea, especially when you're cooking this recipe because then you don't even have to mess with the stove. The key to the sauce is you just want the sugar to dissolve. So you can heat it up in the microwave for like 30 seconds, stir it up and see if your sugar's dissolved. And if it is, great, it's done. If not, just put it in for a few more seconds until it is. So that really is an easy shortcut if you wanna skip the stove completely. Um, I still like to do it on the stove top. That's just how I prefer, so that's what I'm gonna show you. So as you can see here, I've got my um, pan. I'm gonna start, yeah, my pan. I'm just using a little saucepan, and I'm gonna cook it on low, so I'm warming it up. So the first thing you're gonna put in here is ketchup. So I have a cup of ketchup. You're gonna see all that go in here. Now, you may have some sauce left, I have the ketchup in here. I'm just kind of letting this saucepan warm up just a bit. So the next thing I'm gonna add is packed brown sugar. So then you've got onion. So I've got some chopped onion I'm gonna put in here. If you don't have onion, you can also use um, onion powder. So the next thing I'm going to add is some liquid smoke, which this gives it the smokier flavor. So we wanna do that. Now I'm just adding, eyeballing it, but it's about half a tape, sorry, half a teaspoon. And now it's starting to bubble up on me, so I'm going to start stirring this. So we're just going to lightly stir it because I just want to get that sugar to dissolve. And that's really all we're going for here. And then while this is cooking up here, I'm going to add just a dash of 
garlic powder just to give it a little more flavor. And then I'm gonna keep stirring it until the sugar dissolves. Now this only takes maybe a minute to do. That's why if you do it in the microwave, it's real quick. And we're just gonna get that sauce made. Now this is what I feel like really makes the meatloaf. If you don't add this sauce, I don't feel like the meatloaf has a lot of flavor. But most of the flavor is coming from the sauce. So in the past I've had comments where, oh, we used um, marinara sauce or something. Well, then the meatloaf didn't have much flavor. Well, that's because the meatloaf that I'm posting on this recipe, the flavor comes from the sauce. So now I have it all done. I've released the steam and removed the lid. So that part's already been done. So the meatloaf at this point is cooked, but it needs to broil some, which is what we're about to do. The first thing though we need to do is lift this meatloaf out. Now this part you need to do very carefully with your mitts. And we're just gonna lift it out and I'm just gonna sit it here next to me, to the side, and I'm going to get a bowl for the potatoes. So as you can see, the potatoes are all cooked down here. Now I'm gonna take this pot out and just dump the potatoes right into this bowl that I have in front of me. Oop, and I lost one. So sometimes they burn a little bit on the bottom. That usually can be avoided with the water that you're putting in. So I put in about a cup. Rarely do I have them burn, but if they do, just scrape them off and put them in the pot. You'll still have plenty. If this happens, it's only like one. Um, but they normally will come out fine as long as you have enough water in there. Okay, so now I have the meatloaf on the rack. Now what I've done is I've carefully lifted this off like this. You can just lift it off. Now check your the rack because it may be hot and you still need the mitts. Mine wasn't hot so I just flipped it around. So basically you've got this meatloaf and originally you have it sitting like this with the rack at the highest point, right? So now you're going to take the meatloaf off and you're just going to flip the rack around because we want it now to be at the lowest point. So we've got the meatloaf in here. Now I'm going to put this in the pot. You can see where the potatoes left their mark a little bit. So now I've got this at the lowest point and now I'm going to carefully scoot this over as much as I can just to fit it in here. And then we're going to put our corn right on the side. Now the corn is going to take a minute to fit, but what I've done is I go ahead and put it in foil and I just squeeze it up there so that it fits. So you can see that. Now I'm gonna open up the meatloaf like this and I'm going to go ahead and coat it with my sauce that I did earlier. So I've got my sauce and we're just going to coat that really well. You wanna be sure that it's fully Coated. So I'm pouring this on here and then I just brush it on and it just needs to be fully coated. I use almost all the sauce to do this because I want it to be full of flavor. So we've got that on here. I'm just rubbing it in, letting it run down here. Um, it's still covered in foil so it's really not going to drop to the bottom unless you don't have it in the foil anymore. But how I do it is I keep it in the foil. So anyway, I've got all my sauce on here. And now we're just gonna broil this. So I am going to just kind of move this over a little bit. I kind of dripped a little bit of sauce there. And I've got my corn, my meatloaf, all of it right here. And now, so let's get that on broil. So I've got it on broil and I'm gonna reset the time here to five minutes. All right, so I did the broiling for five minutes, so now I'm just gonna open this up and stir up the corn. And I'm just doing this so I can be sure that it all gets cooked in here. So just stir it up. Now while the other is broiling, we can go ahead and do these potatoes. So I use a potato masher, just a hand masher. You can do, um, a, a electric one too if you want, but I just mash them up with the hand masher as much as I can. So 
So we're just mashing those down. Um, they're usually pretty easy to mash because they're nice and soft from being in the pressure cooker. So I've almost got these mashed. And then we're going to add a little bit of milk or cream. You can use half and half. You can use cream. You can use fat-free milk, whichever you prefer. So I have these all mashed. And now I'm going to add my milk in. Now I'm going to add sour cream, just a little bit to give it some flavor. I'm going to add in my butter. Now the butter should melt pretty quickly because you don't have, or you have hot potatoes basically. And then I'm going to add some garlic salt to taste. I eyeball this um, only because I've made these enough to know kind of how much I need. But you are more than welcome to measure that out and start with like a fourth of a teaspoon and then move up from there. So now we are just going to mix these together. I'm going to take a few minutes to mix them point where I think oh a handheld mixer would be nice but for some reason I really like that manual just potato masher it just feels like it works better to me so we got those all mashed and they'll be ready to serve with our corn and our meatloaf as soon as it gets done so now you can see that the meatloaf is done, the corn is done, so we're just going to get this out of the foodie and get it ready to serve for dinner. Okay, so this is usually how we plate this for dinner. Um, this can be served family style, so you can just put the mashed potatoes in, your corn, and then we have the meatloaf cut here. And as you can see, this looks delicious, and it gets kind of like a candied top with the sauce. So it just kind of coats right on top of there. I also like to add parsley on top too. Just makes it a little bit prettier. So you have all of your dinner ready to go and your family's going to love it. So that is how you make the one pot Ninja Foodie meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and corn. So I have my meatloaf, mashed potatoes, corn, and they are all ready to go. Now this recipe is a little more tricky than the other ones. It might take you a little bit longer the first time you do it, but after you make this a few times, you'll realize it's actually really simple and it won't take you nearly as long. Um, we love how it comes out. And again, like I said, we love the sauce on the meatloaf. So that's our favorite part, but feel free to use your own meatloaf recipe if you want, if you have a family favorite and just use this method, it will work. So anyways, I want to thank you again for joining in. You can find this recipe and more on MommyHatesCooking.com. I'll also put anything I used or mentioned below in the show notes too. I hope you tune in next time for the next recipe. Thanks again. Welcome back to Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beef taco soup in your Ninja Foodie or Instant Pot. You can do it in either one. It's delicious and easy to make in minutes. Let's get started. Hi there, it's Christy Still with Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm back to show you how to make Ninja Foodie taco soup. Now this can actually be made in your pressure cooker or instant pot and also your slow cooker too. So there's a variety of ways you can make this. So we're gonna get started with this one today. Now remember, before I go any further, everything I mention or say, including the recipe, will be in the show notes below. Every recipe you could imagine for the Ninja Foodie that I've done anyway, is on mommyhatescooking.com. So you can find all of those there as well. So the first thing you're gonna need for this taco soup is your meat. So we are actually going to brown ground beef in the Ninja Foodie. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to saute. And I think I got it on there and high. And so now I can just start browning this here in the foodie, right in the pot. Now, if you have an instant pot, you can do the exact same thing with the instant pot too. So either way. Now, here's another little um, variation you can do with this recipe. So if you don't want to do ground beef and you want chicken, we actually do this quite a bit with chicken. For chicken, you would use a rotisserie chicken and then you would shred it up. 
So you wouldn't have to do any pre-cooking if it's a cooked rotisserie chicken. So you'd actually skip this step and move right on to adding the ingredients and cooking it on in the Ninja Foodi or the Instant Pot. Now if you're going to use your slow cooker, you can do this the same way you would slow cook on low for eight hours, but you would definitely want to be sure your meat is cooked before you put it in. So either use cooked chicken or cooked ground beef, and then you can move on with all of the other steps. So we are going to go ahead and let this brown. It's warming up here. It's always a good idea to turn on the Ninja Foodi a little before. Um, it lets it warm up just a little bit. Now the other ingredients you're going to use for this soup are going to be a cup of water, some black beans, so you can drain the black beans. I usually use canned black beans and then I drain them. Um, you can use chilies, corn, diced tomatoes, taco seasoning, and then beef broth. So we're going to mix that all into this um, Ninja Foodi, or you can put it into your Instant Pot, and you're only going to have to cook it on high for four minutes. So you will need to add in, in your cook time, about five to 10 minutes of the pressure building in the Ninja Foodi or the Instant Pot. But after that, it's four minutes and it's done. It's super quick and easy to make. It's one we like to make during the weeknights um, because I can get it on the table quickly. And I like that I can do it all right inside the pot. I don't have to use more dishes having to cook it on the stove. So it's just nice to just do it right in the Instant Pot or the Ninja Foodi and then move along with your life after dinner. So I do have this all nice and brown now. You can see the steam coming off of it. So another suggestion here or tip for you whenever you're cooking this, I would suggest lean ground beef. Um, that way you don't have so much oil, you don't have to drain it and you can just leave it all in the pot. Now, if you use 80% lean, you may have to drain it and return it. Um, another thing, you can also use turkey in this soup too. So really, you can kind of choose what protein you wanna use in it. So now that we have the ground beef in here, it's all cooked and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in all the ingredients. So I am gonna add in one cup of water. See that here? Kinda of cuts the steam for me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chilies. And you can just add this in in any order. It's not a big deal. So then I'm gonna add in corn. Now I have frozen corn in here. You can use frozen or fresh, either one. I've done it both ways. We just tend to always have frozen on hand. So then I've got some tomatoes. So these are diced tomatoes that I'm adding in here. And then here are my black beans. I'm gonna put those in. You can use canned or you can soak some beans, whatever you wanna do there. And then I've got my beef broth that I'm pouring in. This is gonna be kind of the base, help with the base of the soup. And then I'm gonna start stirring this up a little bit. So you can see it's nice and soupy and it'll end up with a little bit more by the time you're done. This usually, usually feeds about six. So now that I have that stirred up, I'm gonna add in my taco seasoning. So I'm using a package of taco seasoning. You can use homemade or you can use packaged either way. I usually use McCormick gluten-free taco seasoning. And I usually will use, sometimes I'll use half the packet just cause my kids don't really care for the spiciness of the whole packet. But this time I'm gonna use the whole one. So I'm just gonna mix that all together here. So now it's all stirred up. I mean, it already looks good and we haven't even warmed it up yet. So this is the fun part because it only takes four minutes to cook this. Now to cook this, you're gonna need the Ninja Foodi pressure cooker lid. So this is the lid that is separate. If you're using the Instant Pot, it's just your Instant Pot lid. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on here and secure it. You wanna make sure it is set to seal so we've got that sealed. And now I'm gonna turn it on here and get this function set to pressure. I'm gonna go up to the top. So it's on high, we're gonna keep it on high and I need to change this to four minutes. So I'm gonna change this to four minutes. And it will take closer to 15 minutes because it has to build up the steam. So we're gonna go ahead and start that. And then as soon as the four minutes is up, we need to do a quick release of the steam. So we're gonna quickly release it 
and then we'll have our soup all ready to serve. Okay, so this is just about to go off and then we're going to quick release the steam. So now it's went off, I'm gonna quick release the steam. I'm gonna open the nozzle and it's gonna steam up pretty good here. All right, so we have this all the steam out and I'm just gonna open this up here. So it's gonna steam up the camera really good again, but it looks fabulous. Now, a friend of ours taught us a trick several years ago with taco soup. So first I'm gonna top it with some cheese to serve it. But we used to actually serve this with corn chips or Fritos. And then she introduced us to Doritos with taco soup. And we haven't ever been able to go back to corn chips. Well, I guess these are corn chips, but we like the nacho cheese, not the Fritos. So I just serve it with some corn chips, or some Doritos, sorry, right on the side. And then you have your soup, and this is also freezer friendly. So you can actually take the soup, let it cool completely, put it in a freezer safe storage bag or container, and then you can freeze it in your freezer. Once you're ready to serve it, you just warm it right back up in the pot. You can put it on the slow cooker function and warm it back up or you could even pressure cook it for a couple minutes and warm it back up. Here, I have it plated in a bowl and it's got my cheese on top and my Doritos and it is delicious and piping hot and ready to eat. So this is perfect on a winter day or even in the fall too, whenever it's nice and chilly outside. Thank you so much for joining me today on how to make Ninja Foodie taco soup or Instant Pot taco soup. I hope that you enjoy this recipe. As always, you can find it below in the show notes along with anything else I mentioned, I'll link down there as well. And then I also share recipes every other day on mommyhatescooking.com. And I've been doing that for almost 10 years now. So you're gonna find plenty of recipes there too if you're in need of some new ones. And be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video I'll be sharing with you. Thanks so much for joining in. Hi there and welcome back to Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm going to show you how to make Ninja Foodie chicken drumsticks with sweet potatoes and green beans. This is all going to be made in one pot. Super easy and delicious. So let's get started. So this dinner is actually a one dish dinner that's ready to go in just 30 minutes. You are going to need these ingredients. Six chicken drumsticks, two medium sized sweet potatoes, one bag of frozen green beans. I actually really like the Aldi brand for these. Olive oil spray, rosemary, and garlic salt. That's all you're gonna need to get this dinner ready. So the next thing you're gonna need to do is slice the potatoes. But before we do that, it's a good idea to go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodi on to air crisp for 390 degrees. You can just turn it on for about five minutes and then we'll be ready to use it anyway, but this will get it to start preheating. That way the cook time's not quite so long. Then we're gonna get started on slicing those sweet potatoes. Now it's time to slice the sweet potatoes. First, you're gonna cut them in half. Then you're gonna take each half and cut them again in half, which is making it quartered. Then you're gonna just slice those up into small pieces. And then we're gonna move on to the next step. Go ahead and grab those green beans so we can get them ready. So now that you have your green beans ready, go ahead and spray the pot of the Ninja Foodie with olive oil spray. Add in your green beans and sweet potatoes with a little bit of rosemary and garlic salt, then coat them again with olive oil spray to make sure they're nice and coated. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Go ahead and grab that wire rack that comes with the Ninja Foodie. Make sure it's set on the highest position. Then you're gonna have to work it in there a bit to get it put into the pot with the vegetables. Once you have that done, we're gonna set those chicken drumsticks right on top. Coat the drumsticks with olive oil and seasoning. Air crisp 
390 degrees in 25 minutes. Be sure to flip them over halfway through cook time to get them well cooked on both sides. At this point, you can also add more olive oil spray and seasoning to the other side if you prefer as well. Get them to 165 degrees internal temperature. When you're done, remember to stir up those veggies to get them well coated in the olive oil. Remember, they're going to be crispy. Then it's time to serve up dinner in just under 30 minutes. Quick tip, whenever you get done and you pull the chicken out, Stir up those vegetables, add some olive oil spray to them. If they're not done yet to your liking, go ahead and cook them for another about five minutes. Remember, these aren't going to be steamed vegetables. Think oven baked or roasted. That's the look and the texture we're going for here. That's it. You've made a delicious dinner. Aren't you proud of yourself? I sure am, and I'm ready for dinner. Remember to like this video Plus subscribe so that you don't miss any upcoming videos and recipes. And remember that all of these recipes can be found right on my website at mommyhatescooking.com. And I have years worth of recipes for you there. And not just for the Ninja Foodie. I have them for all sorts of methods. So be sure to head over and check it out. Thanks so much for joining in today to see how to make Ninja Foodie chicken drumsticks with sweet potatoes and green beans. Welcome back to Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm gonna show you how to make Ninja Foodie Baby Back Ribs. I can tell you these are probably gonna be the best ribs that you've ever had. Just trust me on that. Let's get started. Hey, this is Christy Still with Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm gonna show you how to make Ninja Foodie Baby Back Ribs. Now, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is everything I mentioned here along with this recipe is in the show notes below, or you can find it on mommyhatescooking.com. So today to make the baby back ribs, we're going to use the air crisp function and the pressure cooker function with this lid on the Ninja Foodie. So we're gonna start actually with the pressure cooker function first. So in order to do that, you're going to want your air fryer basket or the air crisp basket that comes with the Foodie. Go ahead and put that in the pot. Here's the pot of the Ninja Foodie. So you've got all of that in here. Then you're going to take half a cup of water and you're going to pour it right in. So you need this water for the steam to get the steam building. So now we have got baby back ribs. So I have found that baby back ribs tend to work the best and I cut them into four sections because I need them to easily fit in the basket. So the first thing I'm going to do is spray the basket with some olive oil cooking spray and then we're going to get these ribs to fit in the basket. So we're just gonna go ahead and put these in here. And I just kind of work them around so that they fit well. Now, we actually have a pretty big smoker to smoke ribs. And these actually, in my opinion, taste better putting them in the foodie than they do smoking them because they fall right off the bone. So now, as you can see, I have the ribs in the foodie. And we are gonna take just about Here's the barbecue sauce, about half a cup of barbecue sauce into a little dish with a brush. And we are just going to brush it all over these ribs. So you want it pretty well coated in here. So I'm gonna brush it over each one. And we will do more barbecue sauce later as well. But right now, it's all about getting these lathered. Now, I'd be pretty, I don't skimp on the barbecue sauce. Let's just say that. So you wanna get lots of sauce in here. We want them on all the sides, so I kinda tip them over to get them. I find it's easier to put the sauce on once you get them in here, just so that you don't have them all over the place. But it really is up to you. If you wanna sauce them before you put them on, 
in here, that's fine too. So whenever these come out, they're gonna be so tender that they just fall right off the bone. Now, I'm not a big fan of chewing the meat off the bone when I eat ribs, so maybe that's why I like these so much. I don't have to even mess with the bone, they fall off the bone. So we will just continue getting these nice and coated. I'm almost done with my sauce. I'm gonna get this other side here of this. So I would say about half a cup to a cup of sauce here. I usually reserve some for after, so I'll put a little bowl of half a cup of sauce for now, because once they cook, we'll wanna use a different cup of sauce so you don't mix the raw meat residue, basically. So we have got those nice and coated. And now we are gonna get our lid for the pressure cooker. So now you wanna use this pressure cooker lid, which is the lid that comes with the foodie. So it's not the one that's attached. So we are going to go ahead and secure it onto the foodie. And we're gonna make sure that the nozzle is turned to seal for pressure cooking. And then we're gonna get this pressure cooker ready to cook. I have it set already. It's gonna cook on high for 35 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Now keep in mind, whenever you pressure cook, it has to build pressure. So this can take anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes. So you wanna keep that in mind with your cook time. So once it builds pressure, we're going to release the steam and then we're gonna use the other lid. So I'm gonna come back on and show you that here in just a second. But first we're gonna let this build for about five to 15 minutes of pressure and then cook for 35 minutes. So our timer just went off and now we are going to go ahead and release the steam. So we're gonna turn this to vent and then we're just gonna release all the steam for a little while. Now I have the lid open and you can see the ribs are done pressure cooking so they look really good and they already look super tender, but we are going to now use some more barbecue sauce and coat these again before we air fry them. So right now, they just kinda, I mean, they look good, but they don't have that like crispy outer layer. So that's what we're about to get by using the air fryer. This gives it, the air fryer will give it more of that, like it's been smoked flavor and texture. So you have to be careful whenever you are doing the barbecue sauce at this point because they are really tender. So they're already ready to fall off the bone. So we are just gonna add some more sauce here and then we are going to put it on air crisp so you don't have to pull it out of here or anything. We're gonna air crisp it for 15 minutes at 390 degrees and then they will be ready to serve and they will just fall right off those bones. So we have it all nice and coated. I used about another half a cup of sauce here. Then you can add some more sauce if you want whenever they're all done too. Just getting these all coated here. All right, so I think I have them pretty well coated. Shut this lid, the lid that goes on top of the Ninja Foodie. And then we're gonna turn this function, you can hit the function button, to air crisp, and it's already at 390, so I'm just gonna change the time to 15 minutes. And we're gonna let it cook now for 15 minutes, and then I'll show it to you all ready to eat. So we are done cooking here, and as you can see, these look amazing in here. So I, they also, if you can see this, kind of have this charred edge and that gives it that smoked like texture. So they're gonna feel like they've been smoked when they really haven't. So we're gonna carefully bring these out so that we can plate them. Now I like to use a half sheet pan. So this is a half size sheet pan with some parchment on it and serve them that way. Um, I actually went to a barbecue restaurant that did that and I thought that was such a great idea for barbecue food. So I really enjoy serving them like that. So we are gonna just put them all 
out here. And then we're gonna add a little bit more sauce right on top of them here. And trust me, you will never eat ribs any other way again because these are just delicious. Okay, so I have them plated now on the sheet pan. So I am just gonna drizzle some barbecue sauce on each one here. And then we are going to brush it again like we did earlier. And your guests can just come and grab some ribs. You can cut them up more too, but the meat's gonna fall off as you cut it apart here. So I'll show you that too. So you can see here how it's together and this just falls right off. So I can barely, I barely have to touch it. And here's the bone there. And it just comes right out. So as you can see here, we have these delicious ribs and you are gonna love them. So I know you all are ready to make these Ninja Foodie Baby Back Ribs now. So I have all the information you're gonna need down in the show notes below. And if you would subscribe, that would be awesome, and then you won't miss any other videos. As always, you can find everything on mommyhatescooking.com. Thank you, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you again for joining me today on Mommy Hates Cooking. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't miss any new recipes. As always, check out mommyhatescooking.com for all the recipes that I mentioned here, as well as many more. Thanks again. Hi, this is Christy Still with Mommy Hates Cooking, and today I'm going to show you how to make Ninja Foodie Taco Pasta in your Ninja Foodie Multi-Cooker in just minutes. Now, first off, I want to tell you this is my one of my first videos on YouTube of me actually talking and cooking, so bear with me. I'm learning the ropes with this. I'm really used to Facebook videos that are short with no talking, so this is a new thing. Um, but eventually I would like to get this up to sharing about two recipes a week with you. Um, as always though, I share recipes every other day on mommyhatescooking.com. And if you're looking for Ninja Foodie recipes, I have tons of them there. So you can head there and find more as well. I'm going to put all of this information in the show notes below along with the link to the full recipe. So if you need any of that information, be sure to check out below for all of that. I'll put anything I say here, there. So first I want to start off and say I'm using the Ninja Foodie Multi Cooker. Now there's a bunch of them on the market now that are all called Ninja Foodie. This is the one that has all of it. So it does pressure cooker, air fryer, slow cooker, baking, everything, dehydrates even. So I'm using an eight quart, but you can actually make this with a six and a half quart or even an instant pot if you prefer the instant pot. So let's get started with making this. The first thing you need is one pound of ground beef. Now we're gonna put this right into the pot of the Ninja Foodie, and I have it already warming up on the saute function right over here. So I'm sauteing this meat on high to get it nice and browned. Here's a quick tip with the meat. Whenever you get the ground beef, be sure to get something that's extra lean or you will need to drain it. If you do have to drain it, that's fine, but be sure to use the mitts to pull the pot out, drain it, and then return it back to the pot. Um, in this recipe, I usually try to use 93% lean ground beef. Once the meat is browned, you're going to add in the taco seasoning packet. I didn't have to add in any additional water, but if you need to, just add a little bit of water, about a fourth a cup or less, to the meat so that it mixes in really well with the ground beef. Um, you're, you're going for taco meat here. So I'm going to just add the pasta right into the bowl. So I've got it right here on top of my meat. And we'll put that aside. So now we are gonna add four cups of water. So you wanna make sure that this just coats the pasta. So it just comes right up there and we're gonna stir it in in just a second. So the next thing I'm gonna do is tomato sauce. So I'm gonna pour this right on in and some chilies. Now I'm gonna mention too, I don't like spicy food. So mine are mild and this isn't all that spicy. If you like spicy food, you can add in red pepper or really whatever you wanna do. So now we are just stirring this up. Now that you have all of the ingredients in the Ninja Foodie, 
you want to stir it up and make sure that all of the pasta is under the water. It needs to be completely covered. It's nice and stirred up. So now you're going to use the lid that comes with the nisha. So not the one that it's attached. This is the pressure cooker lid. You'll also use this for slow cooking. So if you're slow cooking, just a little side note, you're going to want this nozzle to vent, not seal. So since we're pressure cooking though, we want it to be sealed. So I'm going to secure the lid right here so it's all nice and tight and on. And then I'm going to make sure that my nozzle is on seal. And I've already got this set. It's going to be on high pressure, so you're going to move it to pressure for six minutes. Once it's on that, you're just gonna hit the button and this is going to build pressure for a little while. Now it can take five to 10 minutes sometimes to build pressure. So you gotta add that into your cook time. Once pressure is built, it takes six minutes. And with this recipe or really any pastas, as soon as that pressure is built, the six minutes has cooked and the timer goes off, you wanna quick release that steam, which means you wanna move this nozzle to vent and get all the steam out. If you don't do that immediately, when you're cooking pasta, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna have mush. And trust me, that has happened to probably the best of us. I, it's happened to me. I will go and do something, not hear the timer go off, forget about it, and come back and dinner has turned to mush. So you don't want that to happen. So you really wanna make sure that you listen for that timer and you get it quick released. So I'm going to be back here and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so now you can see it is cooking on high pressure. We're down to about five minutes. It took about eight to 10 minutes to build pressure. So I'd say this recipe takes about 30 minutes to make from start to finish um, with including that time in there. So I thought while that's cooking, I'll go over a few quick questions that I've got on the Ninja Foodie. Um, one is how does it do all of these things? It's a multi-cooker, but how does it work? So I just wanted to go over some real quick things if you're doing slow cooker recipes, like I said earlier, you'll use this lid that's on it. It's the additional lid that comes with it, but you'll put the nozzle to vent. Once it's on vent, you're gonna just simply put the dial, or if you have the buttons, I used to just have the buttons on my other one. You'll set it to slow cooker, and then you'll put it on eight hours or four hours, whatever the recipe calls for. So the great thing is that with this, you can actually use any slow cooker recipe that you love and just make it in here. It's going to work exactly the same way as long as you use the slow cooker function and the right lid that you're supposed to use for the slow cooker. So it's super easy. We use this all the time for soup. Um, I also love taco soup in this, which I'll leave a link to that in the show notes as well. So the great thing with taco soup is you can do it as the slow cooker, which you can cook the meat just like I did for this recipe, then add everything in, and then you can put the lid on for slow cooker. Or if you're in a pinch for time and you get to five o'clock, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't put anything on for dinner. You can cook the meat, add all the ingredients, stick on this lid, and high pressure for about four to five minutes and you'll have the soup ready to go. So I mean that takes less than 30 minutes and your dinner is ready. So it's super easy to convert the soups to slow cooker or to pressure cooker, either one. So that's really a good option. Instant Pot recipes, convert them just the same. They're all going to work the same with this. Um, it's essentially you're just using the pressure cooker function, same thing you're doing in the Instant Pot. So you just have to make sure you're doing the right lid and for the pressure cooker, you want it sealed, not vented. And the other key there is watch the recipes because some of them will say slow release. That means you just let it naturally release. Um, you don't move the nozzle. If it's quick release, like for this pasta, we're going to quickly release this. So we're gonna move the nozzle as soon as that timer goes off and get that steam out of there so that our dinner doesn't turn to mush. So the other option you can do with this is the air, air fryer, the air crisp is what they call it. That is my personal favorite. That's what really sold me on this. Um, this is the lid for the air fryer or air crisp. And you can make so many things with the air fryer. One of our favorites is chicken fajitas. Um, we put the chicken in there. You don't have to cook the chicken because it's gonna cook in the air fryer. Peppers, everything you want. Turn it on in the air fryer for about 15, 20 minutes and it's ready to go. So that's one of the things you can do as well um, with this. 
Um, the other thing would be the baking. You can bake in it. I've got a few recipes like an apple crisp on there where I use the bake option. So you can do that. Um, you can also dehydrate. There's tons of recipes out there for dehydrating beef and making beef jerky. You can make apple chips, banana chips. I mean, really a lot of options. That's one thing that we enjoy as well. And then you also have the yogurt option, which is a big one. I think with Instant Pot, they love the uh, yogurt option on that. I've seen a lot of recipes of those. I haven't personally done yogurt yet, but you can do that in there as well. Um, broil is my other favorite. Now with the broil, you can, for my personal favorite is our meatloaf. We make it in here. What I do is I put it in the pressure cooker and then I will do the air fryer and broil so that it gets real crispy on top and it's so good. So anyways, that's another recipe that you'll find on my website as well. But I just kind of wanted to go over a few of those questions um, that I've got is just how does it actually work? Um, we love it. I've literally gotten rid of every other appliance that I have except for the coffee pot. And I actually do use the Ninja coffee bar. Um, that's my favorite coffee pot too. So. I really like their products for some reason, and that's not sponsored. I just like them. Um, anyways, but that's kind of what it does um, in a nutshell. But if you ever have questions, you can always ask me or leave me a comment, and I'll try to get back and answer you as quickly as I can. Um, I have used it for well over a year now, and I use it almost every single day. So you can do all sorts of things in the foodie. Steam is all coming out. We're doing a quick release of the steam so that we can get it out of here. One thing I wanted to mention real quick why this is finishing up releasing the steam is it does automatically change to warm or you can just click keep warm and it keeps it warm. That's really a great feature. It's very similar to the slow cooker. Um, we use that a lot because I, like I said, I use this almost every night um, and my husband is notoriously late coming home from work. Um, he has a job where you don't really just get off right on time so this is a great option. Um, for us, I can go ahead and feed the kids, myself, and dinner is still warm whenever he gets home and it just works out perfectly. So we're gonna lift up this lid and let some more of this steam out and let it cool for just a few minutes before we stir it up and serve it. So I just opened up the lid and look how amazing this looks, right? You see that? <laughs> just steamed up. But in six minutes, roughly, we have this delicious pasta that is ready to eat. So we are going to just serve it up with some cheese and call it dinner. So we have our plate of delicious taco pasta that my husband and I are actually totally ready to eat right now. So this is great to feed the family. And I, like I said, I will be back um, with another video. I'm hoping to get that up later this week. And I'm thinking it's gonna be for Ninja Foodie um, bacon wrapped jalapeno peppers, which will be perfect for all the football games and things coming up. Um, I'm also gonna share one on spinach dip as well that you can make in the Ninja Foodie. It's spinach artichoke dip, and it's amazing. You can make it in the oven, but I've recently discovered you can make it even quicker and easier in the foodie. So be sure to check out mommyhatescooking.com. That's where all my Ninja Foodie recipes will be, along with every other recipe I've done. I've actually been doing this for 10 years. So you'll have recipes for days. So thanks again for joining me. See you next time. Thank you so much for joining in to this video by mommyhatescooking.com. Be sure to check out the show notes below for all the important links and details about this recipe. Thank you and join me again soon. Hi there and welcome back to Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm going to show you how to make Ninja Foodie Blueberry Crisp. It's very easy to make gluten free too if that's a need, but it's totally up to you. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create the topping. For the topping you'll need the two cups of blueberries, maybe a little bit more. We're going to cover the whole bottom part of the Ninja Foodie pot, half a cup of granulated sugar, half a tablespoon of flour or gluten-free flour, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon and nutmeg, and then half a cup of water. First, you're gonna start by pouring the blueberries evenly in the bottom of the Ninja Foodie Pot to cover the whole thing. Now you're gonna combine the topping ingredients. So combine the sugar, the flour, the cinnamon, nutmeg, all into a small bowl. 
And then you're gonna pour that evenly over the blueberries. Once you have that evenly over the blueberries, go ahead and evenly pour that cup of water right on top. Now we're gonna do the crumble ingredients. So you will need one cup of old fashioned oats or gluten-free oats, one cup of flour or gluten-free all-purpose flour, one cup of brown sugar packed, a fourth a teaspoon of baking powder and baking soda, and then half a cup of butter softened. Now you're gonna combine all of those ingredients, mixing it together well, and then adding the softened butter last. I find it's easiest to do this with your hands and mix it all together because you're going for a real crumbly mixture here. So you just kind of want the butter worked in, not melted, but softened because we want it crumbly. Now you're going to take that crumble mixture or the crisp mixture and put it all evenly over the top of the blueberries. So you're going to make sure you do this with all of the mixture and you're going to add it right on top and this is going to get you that browned crumbly crisp mixture on top. Right before you shut the lid, you can spray it with a little bit of coconut oil if you prefer, the coconut oil spray. Um, you don't have to though, but you can if you prefer to on top. Once you shut the lid, you're going to set the Ninja Foodi to bake function for 40 minutes at 350 degrees. Now remember for this, we're using the lid that comes with the Ninja Foodi. It's attached to it. After 40 minutes, you should open it up and have a nice brown topping that's sitting on top of those cooked blueberries. We love to serve this with a side of vanilla ice cream or frozen yogurt. It's the perfect summer dessert. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make Ninja Foodi Blueberry Crisp. You can also do this in the oven too. There are recipes for that on my website, mommyhatescooking.com, as well as the full recipe for the Ninja Foodi Blueberry Crisp. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you join me again. Hi there and welcome back to Mommy Hates Cooking. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make air fryer cinnamon rolls in 8 minutes. These can be made in your air fryer or your Ninja Foodi. The first thing you'll need to do is coat the air fryer basket or air crisp basket of the Ninja Foodi with cooking spray. I usually use coconut oil cooking spray for these cinnamon rolls but you can also do olive oil cooking spray too. The next thing you'll do is go ahead and open up that can of cinnamon rolls. For this recipe, I just use a can of Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. We found those are the best ones to use. They're, they stay together really well. Um, some of the other off brands don't really stay together quite as well. So we place those in the air fryer basket, however they'll fit in your basket. The next thing you need to do is go ahead and cook these. You'll cook them at 360 degrees for eight minutes in the air fryer. Or if you're using a Ninja Foodi, it would be the air crisp function. Now remember with the air fryer, they all heat a little bit differently. So I would normally check on these around six to seven minutes to see if they're done for your air fryer. Mine always takes eight minutes. Um, sometimes you may need to add a minute or two or take away a minute or two, depending on how your air fryer heats up. In eight minutes, they're done. They're going to be golden brown on top and nice and soft inside. Once they're done, you can carefully remove them and get ready to ice them. And that's it. You've got them all done and they're ready to serve in just about eight minutes. This is one of the easiest ways to make cinnamon rolls. 
You can find this recipe on airfryerfanatics.com and mommyhatescooking.com. Both are full of delicious recipes. Thank you so much for joining in today to learn how to make these air fryer cinnamon rolls. Be sure to tune in next time for another delicious recipe.